Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at bending and scaling a image along a path in Photoshop. Now before I start the video, let me tell you where you can find some additional training. I have hundreds of classes here at Skillshare. There's a coupon in the description below for you and that includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and often mine is even better. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including 200 of mine. And please feel free to share these coupons with family and friends. And now back to Photoshop. I have an image open and I'm going to create a path. Now the path I'm going to create, I'm going to use the pen tool for. It's very simple to use for this purpose and I'm going to show you how to do it. Just make sure that you have path selected up here, not shape. So I'm just going to draw a path. So I'm just clicking and dragging and click and drag and click and drag. So I've got a sort of path that we can use. If I press escape at the end, I'll deselect the path. But over here in the paths palette, which you can also get to by choosing window and then path, you'll see that we have a path here. And when I select my path with the path selection tool, it's all lit up. Now I'm going back to the layers palette because I want to add a new lag because I'm going to put my shapes that are going to reduce as they go along this path on a brand new layer. Now I've already created a pattern to use but let's go and see how you would create a pattern piece if you don't already have one. I'll choose file and new and choose a document 400 by 400 pixels in size. Now I'm going to add a new layer to this and make sure I turn off the background layer because I don't want the image to have any white on it. I just want it to be transparent. Now for this I'm going to use a custom shape. So let's just go up to the custom shape tool and I have a sort of floral shape here that I'm going to use. Now for this I want to use pixels rather than path or shape because I want to fill it with pixels and I'll hold down the shift key as I drag out my piece and then let go as soon as I've got it the right size. So this is going to be my pattern element and provided it's on a transparent background, all I need to do is choose edit and define pattern and we'll just call this flower. I can now delete that image because we'll just close it without saving it because I don't need it any longer. Back in the other document, I have the path selection tool selected and I have my path selected. So it's got these little handles on it. We'll go to edit and then fill and we'll choose pattern as our fill. Now from the custom pattern drop down list, you'll want to select the last pattern because that's going to be the one that you've just created. Of course, if you've got another pattern you want to use, then just select it. And then you'll click script. Now you can only do this with a version of Photoshop that supports this new scripting. And from the script drop down list, you're going to choose place along path and then click OK. Now these are the dimensions that I've used previously and you'll find that probably your pattern scale is going to have to be quite small but you can experiment with this. So I've got quite a small pattern scale set at 0.13. I've got a small spacing. I'll be able to see that in the image here if I just adjust the spacing. So I'll be able to see if I've got sort of roughly the kind of spacing that I want. But as for size, that's going to be hit or miss. You really won't know until you test it out. Now I have adjust spacing to fit and I've also got scale progression and I've set it at about, let's make it 105. So that means that my design is going to scale as it goes along the path. If you don't want that to be the case, just make it 100 and then it'll be the same size all the way along the path. But I want mine to vary slightly. Now whether it'll go from here to there or back again, again you just don't know until you've really tested this out. So these are my settings for now. I'll click OK. And what we've got is the pattern is going from small at this end all the way through to large at this end. So we've got a pattern piece that's traveling along the path and it's getting bigger as it goes along the path. Now say you wanted it to get smaller. So press Control Z to undo that. Of course that's Command Z on the Mac. And go back and choose Edit Fill and just click OK. 
because that will get you your dialogue back again. So if we want to start big and end up small, then we're going to have to reverse this. So the pattern scale is going to have to be bigger. I'm thinking probably 0.25. And then the scale progression is going to have to be smaller, 95%. So in this case, it's going to get smaller as it goes along instead of larger. So this is what we're saying here. I'm thinking maybe my cat pattern scale isn't big enough. So let's just take that up. Maybe even a bit bigger. Given that we know what it looked like last time in this dialogue, we can sort of guesstimate as to what it should look like this time. I'm thinking that might be a good option. Let's click OK and test it. Well, it's probably a little big. So let's go back and try it again. Edit, fill, click OK. And then we'll say that 0.75 was a bit big. So let's make it 0.60 and maybe close down the spacing a bit. And let's click OK and see how that looks. So you can undo it and redo it as you need to. Now, as for this line that's sitting there, that's just the path. So we can go to the path palette and just click away. And there we've removed the path because we just want the image that's getting smaller as it travels along the path. Now you can also do this with a photo. So let's have a look and see how we do that. So I've opened an image that I want to use. Now I could use a square image, but I can also use an image that has no background. So I've masked out the background here. I'm going to add a new layer to this image, place it underneath this layer and then merge it. So I'll choose layer and then merge down. And that just gets rid of the mask and leaves me with just this image. Now I'm also going to crop it because I want it to be a little bit closer. I want to see a little bit more clearly exactly how big this image is because I'm going to probably have to shrink it down. So now I'll choose image and then image size. And oh, I can see here it's absolutely huge. It's 4000 pixels wide. Well, I would just want a small image so that I can rotate it along my path. So I'm going to make it 500 pixels wide by 226 pixels tall, but just something much smaller. I'll click OK. And I want this to be my pattern. So I'll choose Edit and Define Pattern. And I'm just going to call this Car. Now I can just close that and not save it because I don't actually need it. So let's just trash this and let's go back and create another path. Now I'm going again for a custom shape because there's a custom shape I want to use here, which is a sort of spiral shape. So let me make sure that I'm drawing a path. So I am drawing a path. Let's add a new layer and let's drag out this shape. If I hold the shift key, it'll be constrained to its original proportions. Now I'd like to rotate this. So I'll choose the path selection tool, press Control or Command T to bring up the transform handles. I'm just going to rotate this around. Now I'll go to the direct selection tool because I don't want both these lines because otherwise there are going to be cars along each of these lines. What I want to do is pick up the middle anchor point here and just press the delete key and that just breaks the path at that point. And let's go and get this one and press delete. And now I need to get rid of one of these paths. So I'm going all the way around here holding the shift key as I click on all of these anchor points that are sort of on the inside because I just want one path. So let me just select the bits that belong to that path and press delete and that just gets rid of it. So now we've got just one path. Of course, with that path, we can now add our pattern to it. So let's select the path, edit, fill. We want to select our pattern, which is always going to be the last in the list. Make sure we have script selected, make sure place along path is selected, click OK. And let's have a look and see what we get with these settings. I'll just click OK because that'll give us an indication. Well, it's going from small to large and we would prefer it to go the other way. So let's just undo that and do edit, fill 
And so we know that we want to start with a slightly smaller pattern. So I'm thinking 0.2 is a good starting point. And I want it to get bigger, so I'm going to do 105 for the scale progression. And I'll need to increase the spacing so that I can actually see these cars. I've got to adjust spacing to fit, which should make the cars evenly spaced along the line. So let's click OK and see how that looks. And if I click away from here, we can see that the car is traveling along that spiral line. Now you can have things overlapping. That would be perfectly possible. You can have the same size shape going around that path. You can do all sorts of things. But basically what you're going to need to do is to use this script along a path and just experiment with values in the dialogue until you get what it is that you want. So I hope this video has been of help to you. Please, if you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel.